to be talking to well-known artist uh, Joanne Sanborn, who is not only a fabulous artist, she is also one of our teaching artists, and we are thrilled that she could be here with us today. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Hyla. Thanks for having me on your new show. Oh, well, we love talking to our artists. I think it is so much more interesting when we learn about the artists, learn more about their process and the work that we're getting to see. So behind me right now are two of Joanne's pieces, and they're not typical Joanne Sanborn pieces. Uh, Joanne entered these in our present gallery show, which is entitled March through July 2020 artistic reflections and all the work was created by artists between March and July. It is a very robust and dynamic exhibition containing 84 pieces of artwork by many, many of our favorite artists both here on Marco and further afield. So Joanne, can you tell me a little bit about these pieces and I know that this piece behind me was one of our award winners. So they don't look like your usual pieces. You are really known as a ever, one of our most uh, renowned Everglade artists. So talk to me a little bit about what we're seeing behind me. Okay, well those two are very different for me. I haven't done anything like that since I was a student. However many years ago that was, probably close to 40, 50 years ago. So, but I had done something similar with India Inc. many years ago, put it in a student show and it was the first painting I ever sold. So, and I haven't used the technique since then, but I saw something online that kind of triggered it. And it seemed to suit the times. I was having a great deal of trouble focusing on the Everglades when uh, our world had changed so much and so quickly that um, I, I've, been stri I've been doing other things throughout the whole time. I, I'm not sure why, but I can't, I can't seem to, it, it, nature is team, seeming to take a back seat to humanity right now, so we just have to see what will happen. But for these, this process, these are all, it's a number of uh, acrylic mixed media. So they have acrylic inks on it. The blue one, which is called turmoil, is actually a collage. And you look at this very uh, pieces. So I did something very similar to the other piece and then cut it all up into little squares and then applied it to the canvas. Um, and, and then it has a, acrylic ink, uh, acrylic paint, acrylic liquid, you know, um, soft body as well as the heavy body acrylics and also some pen and ink, some acrylic pens, uh, paint pens. So it, it's, I like the process. It's sort of, uh, your mind goes into the piece and see to see what you can make of it. And I'm interested in getting some depth and getting some connections, almost bridges between the parts and um, making the piece work in a whole. And it was really rewarding to me to get a third place for that piece because having because my usual I've gotten a lot of prizes for my work, which I'm very, very grateful for. But like every artist, I'm totally insecure. And putting those in your show was a giant step for me. And to win a prize, um, an honorable mention for it, or a third place, I guess it was a third place, third place was just so rewarding. Oh, I can paint. <laughs> Even, even if I paint something else, it validated what I have done, and I really appreciated that. Well, they are beautiful pieces, and what I want to let everybody who's watching us know is Marco Island Center for the Arts is an art center, not a museum. So all of these beautiful pieces are for sale, so if you see something you're interested in, give me a call or come on down, and we can make that happen for you. Now, Joey, I'm going to... Yes, I'd like to say that I think it's a wonderful show and people really ought to get down and see it because it's, every artist has done something different. There's such a wide range of work and it's so interesting and I really appreciated it and uh, also enjoyed um, uh, 
Carol Crossley's work in the Petite Gallery, which was fabulous as well, my work. So before it's gone, get down and see this show. It's something you can do and not feel that you're putting yourself in any danger. And I would reiterate, your health, safety, and well-being is of paramount importance. We are a venue that's taken the Paradise Pledge. We are doing everything within our powers, following all state, local, and CDC guidelines. We do ask that you wear your mask, and if you forget it, we'll have one for you. But there's plenty of hand sanitizer. People are social distancing. You're not going to find a crowd, so please, if you come down, as Joanne said, you'll be safe. However, Joanne, I want to move our conversation now into the work that you're better known for, as you said, and, and actually there's a lot going on with nature these days. I know when I've been listening to the radio, especially in light of hurricanes and tropical depressions here in the east and fires on the west and concerns about sea level rise and climate change, I think issues pertaining to our natural world are front and center, and I know your work is um, obviously inspired by nature and certainly the beauty of what we see here in Paradise. Can you talk to me a little bit about the work for which you are well known? Well, thank, thank you. you. I've been outside since I was a child, playing outside by the edge of the sea and in the woods, and just like most children did in the 50s, had a time. But, and you gain an appreciation for it. By doing that, you begin to know the birds in your area and hear their song and things like that. But the Everglades was completely new to me. And when I moved to Florida um, and went for the first time in the Everglades, I was amazed. I had never seen a landscape like this. And it, it was very alien and exotic to me. And I just fell in love. I love them the forms and the shapes and the way clumps of palms make a shape against the sky. I, I just find it endlessly fascinating. So, and even here on the island, we have just wonderful little vignettes that can be, can be captured. And with nature, you have to do it right then or, or right after. You can't wait because the next day is something just as beautiful or even more beautiful. So sometimes I'll take a picture of something that I can't get to right away, but I really like to work on site, at least to get down the basics of a painting, and then take it home and, and uh, work on it in the studio. I'm not a plein air painter. I love to paint plein air, but I'm not a plein air painter. I don't usually finish there. Partly because you get too wrapped up in every leaf. I do. And as I sit there and, and or stand there and walk back and forth, I tend to overwork a painting if I stay on site. But by taking it back, I can recall the feeling of that place. And that's what I want you to feel, the, the place, the, the, the nature of the moment, and because you've experienced similar moments. And, and I, so it's really nice for me when somebody wants to take one of my paintings home and move it. Well, I know a lot of people who have your paintings in their homes as well as other venues. In terms of the medium you're working with, you said here we're looking at collage, we were looking at a lot of different things. What medium do you primarily work in, Joanne? Almost always acrylic. Um, I say that I've done oils and I do watercolors. I particularly take watercolor when I travel. But acrylic is my medium. I started out with acrylics when I first began to paint seriously um, back in the 70s. And in those days, acrylic paints weren't as readily available as they are now when there weren't as many colors. And many of us at that time used house paint. And um, for many years, I had a red, yellow, and blue and in, carried in my little basket with a, with a white or a gesso white and painted from that for years. So it's a good training in color because the um, certainly learning to work with what you have and carry light is always a good deal when you're going out. Wow. Well, as we've said, and we can see some of your beautiful work right behind you, um, I know many places on the island up in Naples um, and beyond where your work is located. Um, can you tell us where we might find, I know, and we know that there's some of your work, some of your smaller pieces are in our gift gallery right now. Where else could we find your pieces here in our area? 
Well, thank you. I don't have a whole lot here in my studio right now because in January, I was asked by um, attorneys Woodward Pierce Lombardo if I would put my work in their gallery for a year. And they apparently asked Art to do that. Paul Arsenault was there before me. He's a very well-known Naples artist. Yeah. And when they asked me, I had just taken down a show from the Historical Museum. So it was a good opportunity. I had a lot of paintings and I said, sure. And little did we know that only two or three weeks later, COVID would really come down. And by mid-March, no one was going into Woodward and Pierce offices except by appointment. So those paintings are still there. I have switched one or two out as they've sold. But um, I'm just waiting to see. I think they had planned on having a reception for me, but they have an office both in Naples and on Marco. They had planned on having a reception. And of course, that got canceled. So we're waiting to see what happens towards the end of the year. I would look forward to that and invite you all to such reception if one actually comes about. Well, thank you. That would be wonderful. Um, I also know that a piece of your work is in a rather unusual location as part of a project that has just been completed here on Marco Island the Creative Wraps Project, where the Marco Island Beautification Committee and Marco Island Center for the Arts worked together for a period of time to select artwork that then was turned into wraps and wrapped around the electrical utility boxes, 11 of them on Marco. I think one of those is wrapped with one of your paintings, Joanne. Is that I was excited with that. That one is on the corner of San Marco Road in Barfield. But what a wonderful project for the city. Um, people love public art, and the response to that about all of the pieces has just been extraordinary. People are delighted, and they're going around getting the addresses, going around to look at each one, and choosing a favorite. And I think it's really changed the conversation here on Marco. It's wonderful to put out some nice, positive news. I know it was on um, on the TV and it's been in the paper and it's just great for the island and I hope we see more things like that. Well, I know our friends on the Beautification Advisory Council um, are so pleased with the success of this project and I know we've already started conversations about some future projects together. And um, we actually here at the Art Center are creating a souvenir map that you'll be able to come and pick up here, which gives you uh, the tour, the map, and um, as well as some images so you can check it off as you go and see all of the public art on the utility boxes on the island. Um, so Joanne, when you're not painting, you're sharing your expertise in another way. You are a teaching artist here at the Marco Island Center for the Arts. How long have you been teaching here? <laughs> I've been teaching at the Art Center since 2004. Um, but I, the, certainly the online teaching is a new thing and well, uh, full of challenges. Well, I, so that our viewers, oh, I'm sorry. So that our viewers know, because they may not know, we of course have had a full complement of adult classes and workshops shops at the Art Center for many, many, many years, but brand new this year, and Joanne is one of our teaching artists, we are now offering classes online. So if you're not here on Marco, or maybe you're not going out, you still can continue your artistic journey with your favorite Art Center instructor, and Joanne, is one of those instructors and she is very popular so if you're interested in one of her classes go to our website check for avail call give us a call check for availability because her acrylic painting classes are selling out fast but you think it's, it's having a lot of fun i have 10 students and i can see them all on the zoom and we um paint we figured out how to talk we figured out how to share our paintings my next newsletter will have a nice picture of them all holding up their paintings. And right now we're teaching the beginning acrylics, so we're going through the basics of painting with materials and composition and value. And then next month will be a color class. And that should be a lot of fun too. I usually bring a lot of colors with me. I have a big basket of colors that I've always brought to class. 
and I tell my students, don't buy too much until you know what colors you like, what ones you really like working with. And of course, this time I can't share them. And I'm finding that even frustrating in the online class. I say, well, you might want to buy this color and give it a try. I can't say take it for it like we could in the past. But I hope those days will be again when we can be together. But I, I think that it's um, really important that we're painting together and having that sense of community. We really get excited to see each other's work and how it's coming along. and. Um, and so we're still able to share and commune that way, even though we're far apart. I have two students from Canada, one from Wisconsin, one from Michigan, two I think from Connecticut. So it's really interesting that this time of year when we usually would have no one around for our class, these people were willing to come online and give it a try. Well, we actually had... I, I tell them. Oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, we had said I tell them by suddenly... This is the hard thing. We're moving the timing is off. You go ahead, Joanne, please. Well, I was just continuing to say, I tell them if I suddenly disappear from the screen, it's because I've tripped over the wires and I will get off the floor and just continue on without me for a while. <laughs> no, we, um, we actually surveyed a lot of our adult students and got a really significant response. Um, we started uh, piloting our online adult classes during July and then launched our actual classes in September. And we're moving into October and right now we're looking to put together our schedule for November and then the season. So again, whether you are here um, or and you wanna do something from your home or whether you're not here and you wanna stay connected with other students and your art center instructors, we have classes in oil painting, in drawing, in um, in collage. I'm trying to think what I'm leaving out. I'm probably leaving something out. Journaling. Uh, oh, thank you. Journaling. Watercolor journaling, which is an excellent class with Hannah Ineson. I know she's got one coming up soon. And we are looking. We'll be adding a watercolor class with Judy Chinsky, and I've got some instructors who have not taught with us at the art center, who we are interviewing about teaching online. So we are hoping that we will have that option available to you, as well as, of course, come to the art center, take your classes. We are limiting class sizes. We are making it safe for you. Um, so, Joanne, before we wrap up, because this is what I finish all of my artist talks with, I want to ask you, because artist stories really are so interesting and they get a, inform us about you as an artist and they get us excited about your work, what or whom has been a major influence for you as an artist? Oh, there's, there are so many and it continues. I think, um, of, of course, Brushwork, Van Gogh, Structure, Cezanne, um, some of the older artists, the, some of the ancient even landscape artists aren't extremely inspiring with what they were able to do on the wall, walls and um, floors of, of people's houses, you know, or I mean, look at the Sistine Chapel. So there's so much to look at and see and take from and admire. Wolf kind of color. Um, he took color and made it something not frivolous. He gave us the colors. Was able to ground color as a as a real value to artists. It was thought of as an addition before him, I think, not something that we could focus on and really. And, and of course, um, who, oh, who am I trying to think of? Who, uh, block. Um, and anyway. There's all that, and then there's a whole variety of artists coming along who are doing amazing things. So I think artists in general are people who want to learn, who like to look at art, and if you just flip through Instagram, you can see a wide range of work that's um, incredible and and interesting. So where the, what the future of art is, I don't know, but I think we're all moving along in a wonderful stream. And I think being inside so much has given people um, uh, who might not have been artists some time to give it a try. And I think that's really valuable too, because everyone has a creative core when they let it out. 
I could not agree with you more. Did you ever take classes here at the Art Center? Or were you already a professional working artist when you became part of what was then the Art League, now the Art Center? I don't think I have. I just, I don't think I have. I, I, let me think on that because I've probably taken a couple of one day things. Um, but I haven't taken any class. I just was curious, having being an instructor, whether you had ever been on the other side. Um, and has there been, is there, both with the um, great masters and the people coming along, has there been somebody in the Art Center family that might have been an influence or somebody that you look back on during your time having been involved here as an artist? And I know that you've been involved for a long time. I have. I have, and I was one of the founding artists of the outdoor artists. So I know Charlie Horn and Phyllis Pransky. Um, Marilyn Worth was wonderful, Shirley Piercy, and those artists really helped ground me. I met Phyllis when um, Larry, uh, Jerry Brunjulson did a critique, and that's Phyllis and I were the only ones who came, and I'm always open for critique because I think you really grow as an artist from that. So um, I have been involved for a long time and, and spent a uh, you know, a long time with other artists, and I, I really enjoy that sense of community with other artists. But they all had a lot to teach, that group I mentioned. Yeah, and I'm those willing to share. Well, I was going to say, I've taken lessons with one of those people. I, I actually learned to paint from Charlie Horn, who um, all right. is now on the East Coast, but still painting, I believe. Um, and obviously I know Phyllis and I knew Marilyn and literally uh, a lot of these people who were so involved here at the Art Center, then the Art League, we have really built on the shoulders of those giants. And we think about it because of course um, we are still celebrating our 50th anniversary, 50 years of bringing art to Marco and beyond. And we want to keep that party going. So let's kick it in in October. Let's go back. And even if we have to do it with small groups, we want to continue to have fun. We want to continue to celebrate our history, celebrate our space time capsule, and bring you all back to the Arts Center. Joanne, I want to thank you for being here with us today. We love having our 